is video two on registers and counters. So as we ended up last time, we were talking about how to transfer data from one register to another. And so this is a very important concept within microprocessors, really any digital technology, as you want to take results of one computation, move them somewhere else, the value from one register you may need to copy into another register so you can process it in some way. And so what we will do to transfer data is use what is known as a tri-state bus. And so what the tri-state bus will do is it will allow transfer from one location to another by effectively only allowing certain registers to access the bus at certain times. And so we will use hardware to make sure that there are not conflicts on the bus to where multiple registers are trying to transfer at the same time. And so this tri-state bus will basically act as a gatekeeper to make sure that data is going onto the bus when we want it to, but we're not sending data onto the bus that could result in a conflict. A common bus is going to allow us to save on wiring, just like you don't have a dedicated path from your home directly to everywhere that you drive that's only available for you we have shared pathways and so you can think about data in a digital system being like cars on a road and so we share the highway system we share our neighborhood roads and that same pathway has certain rules so if you're trying to back out of a driveway and your neighbors trying to back out of a driveway you only allow one of those to happen at a time or else you end up in a collision in the middle of the street. And so you need to make sure that the data that's already on the bus is allowed to pass through before the next data is put onto the bus for transfer. And so we will see how that works. So here is one way to implement a tri-state bus. So we see here, this wire here is the tri-state bus. Um, this is a another tri-state bus here, and so this will allow either register A or register B to be connected over here to this D flip-flop, and the second bit of register A and the second bit of register B to be connected to this flip-flop over here. And so this is a very simple example where we're going to use tri-state buffers to determine which one is allowed to access that shared pathway of the tri-state bus. And so this works if you only have two registers. So in this case, we have register A and register B. They're both two-bit registers, and we need to use this tri-state bus to transfer one or the other over here to this register Q that we will have as output. And so this enable signal, if it is a logic one, you will notice that it enables this buffer here and it enables this buffer here. So if it's a logic one, then the A1 is active on this bus and A2 is active on this bus down here. If it is a logic zero, notice that goes through this inverter. Now you have a logic one right here on this buffer and you have a logic one on this buffer down here. So what that means is if you have zero, then the B1 and B2 are active on the bus. So depending upon whether you put in a zero or a one, you're determining whether you're driving register A or register B to have access to the bus at any given moment. And then when those are set up on the bus, then you can determine when you want to load. So if you wanted to transfer register A over here to this output register here, what you would do is put in one on the enable, make sure register A is set up on the bus, then you would activate your load line, which would enable these to pull in, and on the next clock cycle, then the output Q would take on whatever's on A1 and A2. If you wanted to likewise transfer registers from the B register, B1, B2, then you would put a zero and that would activate the B register onto the buses and then similarly would load it and clock it in. So how is a bus like a bus? Well, 
as a bus circulates around town or around campus this is one of our old ECU buses that you see here we have new wraps on them uh, now of course but this was back during the centennial a little over 10 years ago the bus goes from one location to another so you can think about different bus stops as being different register locations so if you wanted to take people from say the Christenberry gym on campus to different apartment complexes there are certain times when that bus is going to be at different locations and you can load the data into the bus just like people load into a physical bus and then they go to a different physical space so memory actually is a physical space occupied inside of a digital environment and so just like we have actual physical spaces that buses allow us to commute to you have a certain sequencing you have a certain uh, location where this bus goes and a bus route has a distinct order for a reason and so does data transfer so when you're transferring data from one register to another there are certain orders that things have to come in so especially if you're sending multiple bits you may be routing things in specific orders and so you want to make sure you do that and you can't schedule the same bus to be in two places at once you'll end up with a collision and the same thing is true if you try to put two different pieces of data two different registers onto the tri-state bus at the same time here is an example of a bus going through and now we have more than just register A and register B we can actually use a decoder so this gets us to solving the problem of not just using two so in the previous example we used a tri-state buffer now with this decoder we have an enable on each of these registers and depending upon what we put into E or F 00, zero would enable this one, zero, 01 would enable B uh, 10 would enable C and 11 one would enable D and that's going to put all eight bits of this register out onto a bus depending upon which one is selected using the decoder and then if you want to transfer that to register G or register H once the register that you want is out onto the bus then you can choose to either load G or load H maybe you want to copy it into both G and into H and so let's look at an example let's suppose you wanted to transfer the contents of register B into register H so B is going to be right here that'll be the source you would put 0 1 in for E and F that would put a 0 out here enabling register B register B's contents would go on to the bus so now this bus is connecting whatever's in register B to both these lines and these lines but if we only want it to go into register H now we activate the load on register H and on the next clock event now register H holds the contents that were in register B previously. So we will stop there and next time we will pick up and talk about accumulators.